and we are excited for you to have joined us. If you desire prayer at this time, you can give us a call as the phone number appears right below your screen. And if you desire to write us, you can write us here at the church, 5401 West Lake Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60644. As always, let's thank God for this national and international audience. All right, we're going to get right on into the Word of God. Uh, those of you, if you need a Bible, hold your hand up. The ushers will assist you. We're still in volume two of Don't Let Go of Your Faith. Now, before I uh, get into the key areas uh, that it takes for you to not let go of your faith, I want to once again kind of remind you on the importance that you keep the right perception of why you're supposed to live by faith. See, we can do all of this teaching and we can give you step one, step two, step three, and uh, key number three, four, five, six, seven, and all of that. But it's very important that you keep the right perception of why we've got a mandate to live by faith. And I say that because the wrong perception of faith, it's going to uh, really affect your belief about faith. Yeah. Believe it or not, some folk really, they have a hard time believing that they can live by faith because they have a wrong perception about faith. All right now, all right now. So now the wrong perception is going to affect your belief, and we know that what you believe is determines your decisions. Yeah. And I said this on the other day that this is just human nature, that most things we don't understand or most things that uh, we just don't get, we do one of two things. Either we ignore it or we'll reject it. That's just kind of uh, by nature. So now a wrong perception of faith, what it will do, it will tell you that it don't work. You know? You know, if truth be told, a lot of folks won't be honest in the body of Christ. When your perception is not right, you say, this, this, this faith, it, it really don't work, or I'm not sure if it really, really work, works. And then a wrong perception may even tell you, well, it only worked for certain people. You know, I remember when I first started really, really learning uh, the principles of faith and certain things about faith, See, because you can look at other people and put them on this, this high pedestal and think that, that it's just something supernatural about them or they're a favorite of God or God just uses them in that kind of way and can't use me like that. So I understand that, 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 that perception, but that's not true. You know, faith does not just work for certain people. You know, or it's easier to say, well, it, it works for the preacher. That is not true. Now, many of you who, who know my story, I've been preaching a long time. And uh, even out of these years of pastoring, uh, uh, hey, I st still had some real big struggles until I really understood faith and started applying the principles. Yeah. You know, I, I've said this many, many times. I was a pastor on welfare. You know, before it was the link card, it was the food stamps. The $65 book. The $50 book. The $40 book. And I think they were, uh, I know the, the singles were brown. <laughs> then years ago, I found a restaurant that took food stamps. Well, we was in there buying that shrimp, buying that stuff, because, you know. And I was a pastor. Now, 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 let me say this. I wasn't doing anything dishonest. I wasn't cheating on us in the system or nothing like that. It's just the time, you know, my job, where I was working, I didn't make enough for, for six people. And I'm going to tell you the thing about that is not only me not understanding faith, 
I had a wrong perception about things anyway, because based on some things I were told. See, I was told, and I'm not coming against anyone, but I was told almost like it was okay. Now, I'm not coming against anybody. I'm not saying being on public grade is wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But, but it was kind of in me that it was okay, so it just kind of prolonged things. You know, that, hey, you know, because I was told, you know, hey, get, 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 get them food stamps with, you know, many taxes as people pay and all that kind of stuff. And, but until I started learning faith, that there's something more better out there. And if I remain dependent on man's system, I'm going to be limited. And I'll never be able to reach my potential. I ain't coming against anything. I always say you may start out one way, but you don't have to finish that. Because we've all started out, whatever. But, but, but it doesn't have to end that way. Mm. So you've got to make sure you don't have a wrong perception of faith. And the thing about faith, the flesh will reject faith. See, because the, the flesh is selfish. The flesh wants everything now. Now, we can all identify with that. That's, that's how the reason some of our credits are just jacked up. Our credit is jacked up. Because we wanted that stuff right now. And flesh does. It wants stuff right now. Flesh does not want to wait. Flesh demands its desires to be fulfilled now. Flesh has no patience. And that's the opposite of faith. Hmm. That's why it's easy for the devil to try to make us think that living by faith is such a hard journey. And that it just takes too long. It, it's something I just, can't, I just can't reach it. Pastor, I hear what you're saying, and I know what's saying in the scripture, but see, the enemy will, will make you think that this, this is just an impossible journey. That, that, that I know I can't. I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I just don't really believe I can get my house by faith. I don't really believe I can receive my healing by faith. I don't really believe my family can actually be restored by faith. And the enemy will park on your shoulder and just make it seem like it's just something you can't attain, something you just can't reach, that this is just some long, drag-out journey, and you don't have enough time. That's why we always think of plan B, plan C, plan D. Truth be told, if the devil can keep you away from faith, he can keep you away from dependent on God. See, because without faith, what kind of relationship do you have with God? See, if he, if he can keep you from living by faith, then he automatically stops your dependence on God. See, now, we, 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 can, we can say the more, I depend on God, but if you ain't got no faith, no, you don't. So if he can get you away from faith, that stops your dependence. On, you, you are not depending on the Lord. How are you depending on? It takes faith to depend on. Hmm. I think I said on the other day, that, that's like having a marriage with no trust. And we know that's a jacked up relationship. You're in a marriage and nobody trusts each other. So now if you don't embrace this life and journey of faith, then you're going to reject it. And your rejection is an automatic disconnection from what God has for you. Because yeah. never forget, according to Galatians 3, uh, 13, uh, all the promises of God, they are received through faith. And then there's Hebrews 6, 11, and 12 that tells us that through faith, we inherit the promises. So it takes faith to receive what God has for us. It takes faith to inherit what God has for us. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and 6. Many of us know, know this by memory. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, 
But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, this is not saying that if you don't live by faith that God is mad at you or God doesn't love you. That's not true. There, there, remember, there is no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ Jesus. So it's not saying that for whatever reason, if you get out of faith or let go of your faith, that God loves you less or he's mad at you. It's not, it's not saying that. But when we get out of faith, it, it hurts the relationship. See, it, 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 just like uh, uh, in a marriage, when there's no trust, it hurts the relationship. In a marriage, when trust has been broken, it's not saying that the parties don't still love each other, but it hurts the relationship. Hmm. So it's the same thing here. You know, what it does is, is all that God has done for us, all that he's given us, without faith, we can't receive it. See, that's what I mean. It, it hurts the relationship. You see, because healing does belong to you. Deliverance does belong to you. Prosperity does belong to you. Joy, peace, love, power, all of that does belong to you. But without faith, it disconnects me from receiving it. Oh, my. See, Psalms 35, 27 reminds us that God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants or his children. So, so, so when, 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 when manifestations comes in your life, God loves it. I've said this years ago, God wants you healed more than you do. God wants you to walk in your prosperity more than you do. God wants you to walk in joy and peace more than you do. He takes pleasure. When his children are coming up from where they're at, when they're prospering. But if there's no faith, then you can't connect to his promises. See, without faith, it only just becomes a written word instead of a manifested word. See, without faith, all we do is just read it. We just read about it. And then that's when we take that perception is for somebody else. Without faith, we're just reading the story. With faith, you're reading your story. That's the difference. See, without faith, it's like you're reading someone else's. But with faith, you're reading your life. I'm healed. I'm delivered. Wealth and riches is in my house. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I got peace that passes all understanding. It becomes my life and my story. Quickly go to Matthew 7. 7 chapter of Matthew, verse number 7. Jesus says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. To him that openeth, it shall be open. But that lets you know right there with prayer. With folks used to say, God has three answers. Yes, no, or maybe. No, I don't. T to me, all this sounds like is yeah. yeah. If you ask, it's given to you. If you knock, it's going to be open. You know, all this sounds like yes. Then he says in verse 9, Well, what man is there of you whom if his... Son, ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent or a snake? Then he said, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Hmm. Now, how do we ask, seek, and not? We do it by faith. See, that's why it's so important that we embrace this journey of living by faith. Start embracing it. See, don't, 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 don't look at it like this some long, hard journey that you won't be able to live. <laughs> oh, my. You see, we got to keep the proper perception. 
See it as your help and not a hindrance. That's my help. Faith is going to help me get in my house. And keep it. See, that? that's another message too. Faith is going to get me there and keep me there. That it have nothing to do with the economy. Have nothing to do with the job. Have no, absolutely nothing to do with any of that. Faith will get me healed and keep me healed. Yes. In spite of the plagues and sicknesses that may be going on around me. Faith going to keep me happily married in spite of one out of two marriages end in divorce. In the church. So I got to keep the proper perception of faith. See, faith is not trying to take something from you. Faith is trying to get things to you. See, we got we to keep that in mind. To get, don't get that, that wrong perception that this don't work or it's just for certain people. Or in order for me to give faith, I got to be saved 10 years. No, you, who told you that? God never said that. Remember, Jesus said, according to your faith. See, like anything, your faith is developed based on the amount of time you put in. Somebody could get saved last night and get into that word and start getting manifestations next week. So it has nothing to do with how long you've been saved. And I've seen that happen. Supposed to get that word and get manifestations. Then you got some folks who've been saved 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. They hear the word and be like, oh, I heard that before. And still ain't got no manifestation. So that has nothing to do with it. See, that's what anything, you know, the more you spend time in, you develop, it comes. Amen. So faith is not trying to take from you. It's trying to get things to you. Remember I preached a message some time ago that uh, I said one of the things, there is no loss in the kingdom. See, the devil will always try to make you think that. That, you know, if you, by giving up something or giving something that you lose, you're losing something. But to give is to gain. The, really, the exchange of receiving is giving. So God is not trying to, 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 to take something from you. He's trying to get something to you. Amen. And it takes faith to do that. Yeah, yeah. Now, See, because when you think about it, there is, no, there is no system like the kingdom of God. Yeah. Now. now, I don't come against investments out there and all of that is fine to a, to a degree. But that, that can't measure up to how the kingdom operates. You know, hundredfold out there or a thousand times over out there. You can't, you, there's nothing you can compare to, to the life of faith. See, there are certain, you know, to get things out there, you need some money. In the kingdom of God, you don't need any money. You just need faith. See, that's the difference. See, because they have their laws and rules out there. But in here, you just need some faith. I've been saying for years, and I know we all have to renew our minds with that. We don't have a money shortage. We got a shortage of faith. See, because the world can never give you enough money or pay you enough money for you to live according to what God has for you. Think about it. You know, you try to just think about Job, Abraham. I mean, how much were they really worth? Amen. Who can pay them like that? And if the truth be told, in whatever positions or jobs we have, thank God for them. But come on, most of us, we know we ain't living like we want to. Because that paycheck... <laughs> 
That paycheck ain't even enough for the minimum. Come on, we tell the truth about it. Your paycheck, you get paid, that ain't even enough for the minimum. Most folks can't get their check and leave it on the dresser. Oh, forget about when you get paid. Oh, payday today, man. Some of us clown the minutes. And let them say, uh, the checks didn't come today. You're going to either be rebuking devils or get ghetto, one or the other. <laughs> come on now, I'm being honest about it. Truth be told, really, it ain't even covering the minimum. Most folks don't even have an extra $50. Can you pay all your stuff up and still have some left over? Most folk can't do that. No, and I ain't coming against you. But, but that's why the system of God has nothing to do with the money. It's about faith. Faith can get all needs supplied. And when you're in faith, there is no lack. All needs are supplied when you're in faith. Let me move on. See, I'm, I'm trying to do so that we don't, we don't lose that, that wrong perception. You know, and let me tell you something too. And don't, don't compare yourself to somebody. See, don't, don't look at somebody else. Well, they were in church and, and stuff. They, they didn't work out. I ain't, got, I ain't got nothing to do with that. If for some reason, it'll never happen. But if for some reason, and my life started getting out of order, you, you don't compare me messing up with this. It'd be like, Pastor didn't get off. It ain't nothing wrong with the word. Something was wrong with him. See, I got to say that because sometimes some folks looking at other people. I know they say, I know my uncle, he really saved. I know he, I know my dear, she was really, she was real saved. But, but why did this happen to her? What does that got to do with this? And then on the other side to that, we can look at some folks who don't even come to church they, they can't even really spell Jesus and, seem like, and look like they're doing better than you. Don't you look at that. And the devil will get some folk with that. So and so, so. They don't tire. They don't give. They don't come to church every Sunday. And they look like they're being blessed. And then you start looking at that and then you start thinking. And then the devil will tell you, that's right. So you ain't got to do all that. I know what Reverend M saying, but that's Reverend M. Plus, you know Reverend got it anyway, so he ain't got, you know, he don't know what you got, what you going through. And he keep talking to you, and you be like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> and then the devil, he'll fool you too. Because you say, okay, I ain't going to tie and get no offer. Then something good will happen. Then the devil say, see? And you be like, yeah. See, I could sniff that devil. I know him. He is a deceiver. He can only deceive by the strings of some truth. See, because he'll will you in. But once he gets you, whoop, that's how he operates. Whoever that was why you take that. Let me, let me, let me, let me move on. Last time I began dealing with three key areas that it takes to not let go of your faith. Number one, we said your will. Number two, we said the will to win. And three is the working of the word. Now, we kind of talked about your will. We said that really 
Your will is going to always expose what you're determined to do. We said that it's your will that decides if you're going to hold on to faith or you're going to let go of your faith. The power of your will, um, you know, it, it, it determines, am I going to do this or am I not going to do this? You see, your will can never be controlled by anyone else. You are the only one who has possession of your will. Matter of fact, it's, 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 it's a gift from God. We know that he's given us free will. No one can control your will. Now, some folks may say, well, you know, so-and-so made me do something. I didn't want to do it. Okay, that could be the case. Remember, you didn't want to do it. That was still your will. You didn't want to do it. See, no one can snatch your will. You know, yeah, you might do this, but it ain't your will. I don't want to do this. Yeah. So the will is a powerful force that can make or break. Your will can make the difference in victory or defeat, success or failure, even life or death. You can will yourself out of a bad situation. You know, when some folks say, hey, they got a strong will, you can will yourself out of certain situations. You know, you can be in a bad situation. You're like, you know, I, I, I ain't going out like this. Uh, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, I am not going out like this. I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of this. I'm, I'm do- and your, your, the, your, your, the strength of your will can will yourself out of it. I am not going out like, I am not, this is not going to continue. And that's with any situation. You know, I've seen some folks will themselves out of bad health. Some folks are on the brink of death and will them say, no, I'm not going to die. I'm not, no. This disease might be running in my family. Big mama might have it. Grandpa might have it. Uh-uh, but and this is not going to happen. I'm stopping this right uh, No. That is my will. No. You will yourself out of it. You know. You, 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 you it, it takes your will to want to live by faith. Hmm. So you must have a will to not let go of your faith. On last time we said that if it's really your will, you'll have some evidence that proves that you haven't let go of your faith. Keep this in mind. When something is really your will, you will prepare for it. Good example, uh, most of you sitting here right now, it was your will to come to church. And you prepared for it. See, your will is not about good intentions only. See, when some folks say, well, you you want to be at church tomorrow? Well, some some folks just say, if it's the Lord's will. What do you mean if it's the Lord's will? You know it's his will for you to come to church. (laughs) And and folks, they they didn't mean no harm with it, but, but they would say that. See, at church tomorrow, well, if it's the Lord's will, what are you trying to say? As if he's going to change his mind. It is his will for you to be in church. Because Hebrews tells us don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. You know. But then some will say, you know, well, will and I be there. Okay, well, that may be in your intention, but it's beyond just a good intention. You see, your will will execute those intentions. Amen. Yes. See, your will is just not a uh, uh, good intention, but it's executed. When it's my will to do something, I'm preparing for it. Just like tomorrow morning, most folks, it's their will to go to work. It ain't no if it's the boss's will. <laughs> it's your will to go to work tomorrow, and you're going to prepare for it. And you're going to execute those intentions. Then the next thing uh, uh, it takes to not let go of your faith is the will to win. And I asked the question, do you really have the will to win? And I didn't say the will to survive. See, because some folks, they just have a will to survive. Some folks just have a will to, if I can just make it. 
you know, or if I, you know, a will to just adjust to the situation. There was a song years ago, and they say, uh, Lord, don't move the mountain. Just give me the strength to climb it. And, and they meant, well, I ain't coming against it. But we know that's not biblical. Because Jesus told in, in, in Mark 11 to speak to the mountain. You know. So, so I don't want a, 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 a will to just survive, to just make it. Just, just, get, just give me strength to endure this. I want this over. See, see, and if you don't, there is a difference. See, and some folks would do that. Lord, just give, me, just give me the strength to just be able to deal with this. To just be able to handle this. No. Amen. Truth be told, I don't want to go through this. Now, if we can be honest about it, I want this thing over. I don't want to, don't want to uh, uh, get, just get used to stuff. Hey, because a person standing in an abusive marriage, you know, Lord, just give me the strength to just deal with him hitting me upside my head. You know, just that I can just live with it and deal with it, that it just don't hurt so much. Are you kidding me? You all hear y'all go home. I don't want that will. No. This stuff got to end. Either he stop or got to go. One or the other. Stop or go. So we're not talking about having a will to survive or adjust to a situation. But we're talking about winning becomes your only option. And see, and you've got to think that way in order to stand when challenges come, when adversity comes. Then we said, well, in order for me to have the will to win, I've got to know that I'm supposed to win. This is very, very important, to know that I'm supposed to win. You don't have to turn to it, but uh, 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 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always. Always. You know, I was brought up really where you kind of win some, you lose some. And then in the Baptist church, we used to sing a song, um, Rising and Falling, but I'm on my way. Now, I don't nobody come. Before anybody gets you, talking about the Baptist, you got to be kidding. I will reach my Baptist card that's still in my wallet right now and show you. So don't nobody talk about it. But that's a contradiction to this always, always causes. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Now, always doesn't mean sometimes. Always is all. See, we got to get the right perception. Always. What does always mean? Always. All the time. Always. Not sometimes. Always. Not just on Sunday. Always. Not just on Easter. Always. I like that. Thanks be to God who always causes. See, he does it. See, to always do something is not an accident. It's not a mistake, but it's deliberate. It's, it's done on purpose. God purposely, he deliberately causes us to win. So you got to get that. God has he's designed me to win all the time. We are not supposed to lose in anything. See, get that win some, lose some out of your mindset. See, because if you believe that, then that's what you'll keep getting. You'll win sometimes, sometimes you lose. Now, if it was that way, he shouldn't have said that always. I don't know what always means other than always. Always doesn't leave room for something else. Always is always.
So that obviously in order for me to win, there's got to be a battle. See, he didn't tell us that, that we won't be in battles. He didn't say that, 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 that afflictions won't come. He didn't say that there's not going to be some trials or some challenges. Yeah. But he said you're going to always win. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my. See, just think about it. See, when you know that, then you'll make different choices. If you know that, you're going to win. See, if we don't know that, then we'll, while we're in a battle, then we'll start making decisions just in case this don't turn out right. Just in case if something. No, 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 no. When you know that, I'm, I'm winning this. I win this. See, then, then when challenges come, you don't even look at them different. And I'm winning this. It's, it's just like last few, uh, a few months I've been kind of keeping up with the basketball season. And certain t teams who are real good, and then I was kind of watching these real good teams lose to these horrible teams. Now, on paper, that shouldn't happen. But you know why they lose? Because they have a different perception. You know, see, see, in, in their mind, they, 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 they kind of like, well, we, 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 you know, we easily, and they don't try, they don't do anything, then they end up losing. Yeah. See, you got to make sure that you keep the right perception. You, see, when you know you're supposed to win, then you view it totally different. Yeah. Trying times, they'll no longer have that same effect. When you know the outcome. Yeah. See, when something come up, you're like, okay. It doesn't mean you like it. It ain't like you embracing it. Okay, well, all right. I'm going to win this, though. When it's all said and done, I'm going to come out the winner. See, yeah, we're in battles. We're called to battle, absolutely. But we're destined to win. And you got to look at that. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win this. I'm winning this. This is not sin. This is part of that, that your will and that will to win. You don't have to turn to it, but John 16, Jesus says, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace, but in the world you have tribulation." But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. One translation says, for I have overcome the world, I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Yes. Now get that. He says that in me you got peace. In the world there's tribulation, but be of good cheer. In other words, challenges may be in the world, but the challenges don't have to be in you. See, that's the difference. You see, if you let go of your faith, then you're going to participate in the challenge. You do not have to participate. You don't have to be a willing participant whenever adversity comes your way. See, when lack show up, just don't participate in it. I'm not going to participate in it. Sickness try to show up, I am not going to participate in that. Fear tries to show up. I am not going to participate in that fear. Hmm. See, things could be going on, but don't participate. Oh, my. You see, holding on to your faith will give you the will to win. So we got to stop allowing the enemy or even a situation to rob us of our victories. Victories. Not singular, plural. Victories. Why? Because we win all the time. All the time. Oh, my. Let me move on. Now, is there a connection with the will to win and staying in faith? 
Absolutely. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6 and 12. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Or it says, confess the good confession of faith. But fight the good fight of faith. I preached a message years ago. The only fight is the good fight. I wonder if we can dig that up. I'm sure it's on a cassette tape. <laughs> See, the faith fight is the good fight because the faith fight always wins. See, because you think a natural will make a fight a good fight. Well, a good fight because you win. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight because the faith fight wins. Truth of the matter is the faith fight is a fixed fight. Oh, yes, it is. A fixed fight. Now, what's a fixed fight? The outcome has already been determined. I always like giving this example. It's just like uh, pro wrestling. You know. Pro wrestling, is it fixed? Yes. Now, years ago when I was a kid, when I started, they used to didn't, didn't say that. Now they, they tell you now because they got to tell you. This is entertainment because people started doing it for real. No, this is fake. This is entertainment. But it is, it's fixed. In other words, they know, they, 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 they you know, they have folks now, uh, I forgot what they call them, but they sit in the office, they have meetings on how the matches are going to go and who's going to win. It, 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 it's fixed. So it's the same thing here. The faith fight, <laughs> the outcome has already been determined. It's a prearranged fight. It's been decided that the fighter with the faith is the one that's going to win. See, when you get that, then you will view the challenge different. This fight is fixed. It's fixed. You know, and it can, it can look whatever, but it's still fixed. But Pastor, it just still, it, it, it just be looking like I ain't going to, it's fixed, you win. You know, I was watching uh, yesterday, they had a, a, like a Rocky Marathon. Now, I didn't see Rocky pff, tons of times. As I saw when it first came out in 77, I mean, I, I've seen it tons of times. But every time I see it, here we are 35 years later, it still gets me. I know what's going to happen. But that last round, it always gets me. The music, dun, 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 Rocky just, and I'm, I'm sitting, I was at home yesterday, I'm looking like, getting into it, I didn't seen this a hundred times. <laughs> so the emotion still that even though I know what's going to happen, the emotion can still be there in the faith fight. But see, you got to know still what's going to happen. You win. Yeah. So that's why you don't get moved by the emotions. It feel like I ain't win. Who cares? It looked like Rocky was not going to win. Hmm. So now. The faith fight has already been decided that the fighter with the faith is going to win and the other fighter is going to lose. We're in a battle of sickness, the fighter with that disease is going to lose. The fighter trying to, trying to fight me with that lack is going to lose. 
trying to fight me with that depression, with that fear, you're going to lose. Because I'm the fighter with the faith. And it's been determined that I'm going to win and you're going to lose. See, this faith fight, it ain't no two winners. It's only one. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see, now, when you keep that in mind, then it helps feed your will to win. You see, every battle, it becomes easier to face when you know the outcome. See, when you get out of faith, see, now you can feel you're just not sure. But when you stay in faith, the battle, it seems, because I know how this is going to end up. When? I can't tell you exactly when right now, but I know how it's going to end up. But then let me tell you something. Then there's a, there's a place where you can get in faith where you can say when this is going to end. Somebody missed that. Yeah, there's a, there's a place you can get where you know what? This faith fight is going to end August 26th. Now, why you say August 26th? Because her and I declared we moving into our house before the school year starts. That was in July. So you can get to a place where you say this thing, this, this thing is going to end. That's why we had no reservation of selling the other house with on paper nowhere to go. Because we knew we were going somewhere before school started. Now I ain't telling anybody to do that, but you can get to a place like that. Mm. So when you know the outcome battle becomes easy. That's why we don't get moved by how things look. How they seem. How they feel. You know. See it is a fight. And many times it's supposed to look bad. You know. Cause see, see don't get moved by that. But it has to just, it's a fight. It's fixed. But it, it's supposed to look. See, if it just, if it just always seemed lopsided, one said, that ain't no real fight. So it's supposed to look bad. <laughs> what do you mean look bad? That's why we don't look at the things that are seen. Temporary, subject to change. We keep looking in our faith. See, I'm trying to help somebody with that. Don't, don't think it's, that's the situation. It just looked. No, no. It's supposed to look that way. How my knees going to be supplied when I got the disconnection notice in that? It's supposed to look like that. How, how you say my body heal and doctors say they see something worse and my back hurt? What? It's supposed to look like that. Has it seemed like my business ain't going to never prosper right? How? It's supposed to look like that. It's a fight. But see, you don't have to get all confused and crazy about it because you know the outcome. My body is healed. My needs are supplied. My business is flourishing. See, that's why it's so important to have that will to win. And nobody can give it to you. Only you can do that will to win. God said, I'm supposed to win. It's my, I'm winning. I'm not compromising. I'm not going to settle for a piece of victory. I, you got to get the all or nothing. Don't give me a piece of victory. Because a piece of victory is part defeat. And there is no defeat in faith. I win 100%. 
Praise the Lord. God promised me total healing. I'm not settled to settle with it because I just feel better today. I'm not settling. You, you, you can get off this, man. I ain't settling just for that. That will to win. If God promised you a 20 room house, you, you don't settle for five. I take the five, that's it. No! See, don't focus on the battle, focus on the victory. See, that's where some of us miss it. We keep focusing on the battle. <laughs> See, that's how the enemy is able to, 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 to strip or to rob us of, of victories. You see, because we keep looking at and living in the battle. We looking at the battle. We living in the battle. And we should be looking at the victory. But we looking and living in the battle. Amen. I just can't take no more of this. I'm so tired of this. That, that's where that fainting comes in as Pastor Lawrence mentioned 8 o'clock service. You feel like fainting and quitting because you're looking and living in the battle. Instead of looking at the victory. you looking and living in the battle. You are not supposed to live in the battle. You're supposed to live in the victory. Tell somebody, stop living in the battle and start living in the victory. Matter of fact, I think God said, told his people years ago, the battle is not, it belongs to the Lord. So if the battle is not mine, why am I looking and living in it? My job is to look and live in the victory, not in the battle. Truth be told, you shouldn't even be seeing everything that's going on. I know somebody missed that. Situation can be that, but you shouldn't be seeing it in everything. See, because I'm, I'm living in the victory. These things may be going on. Yeah, they are. But remember, I'm, looking, I'm not looking at those things. Because I know that stuff is changing. I'm living and looking in the victory. Sometimes what even gets us in trouble is our intellect. Now, I'm all for education. Believe me. But you got to be careful to don't allow that intellect to get too much and start dominating. Well, you know, you can't do this until you cross every T and cross every I. You can't start it because you don't know nothing yet. You got to wait, wait till you go to school. Wait till you wait till you wait till you wait till you wait till it. And that intellect get in there. You, know, you got to be careful with all that. See, and I told you, the devil will make sure you don't, you don't go anywhere because you keep focusing on all this other stuff. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, who that was for take? I'm all for education. But sometimes when, you, when, you, when you're in a faith fight, sometimes you got to shut out stuff. Amen. I'm serious with that. See, if you, let, me, let, me, let me simplify it. If you believe in God for property, now you know your credit jacked up. You know it. You don't have to look at it again. You don't. You know it. Now, if I'm in favor, I'm believing. I don't, I don't want I don't, I don't to listen to no more 
programs on get my credit up to 800. I don't see, I got to block it. I know what I'm talking about. I got to block all that stuff out if I'm trying to do this by faith. Because I'm trying to get that not by information. I'm trying to get that by revelation. You got to block. See, some of us, we too smart. Son, you got to block this a lot of that stuff out. You believe in God for healing. You know, you need to block some stuff out. You know, you don't need to hear new, you know, oh, this new disease then came out. You know, I don't need to hear that. And I know folks mean, well, family can be at you. You know, you're taking your medicine. You know the doctor, I don't need to hear all that. I mean, you got to block a lot of that stuff out when you believe in God. I'm not telling you stop doing stuff, but it's a lot of stuff you got to block out. Whew. All right, let me, let me, let me move. Hmm. So now, our part is to not let go of our faith. I've got a will to win because I'm fighting the good fight of faith. And the faith fight has already declared me the winner. Let me give you one more verse. And I, and I, oh, I'm just out of time. I just got to quit. Let's go to 1 John 5. Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, and don't, and don't try to win. You already win. You already won. You know, don't, 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 don't try to manufacture victory. Don't try to do something to make you win. We've already won. God is the one who's already caused us to triumph. See, the only thing you and I, we really got to do is, is, is to, to hold on to our faith. Stop trying to make things work. See, and I know that takes a renewal of the mind. God knows I do. You stop, you're not smarter than God. Stop it. Now, either you're going to depend on God or you're not. Now, if you're not going to depend on God, then you depend on your senses. And let me tell you something. The devil will make sure. See, because I said this years ago, the devil is a flesh devil. See, he can't come against faith. He can't come against that because faith gives us the victory, and that's what we're going to read in this first John. But see, if you're trying, you dependent on yourself, and you're a child of God, the devil will make sure you don't get stuff. Yes. See, because when you're dependent on your senses in the world's way, he controls that. Remember, he's the God, the little G-O-D of this world, the system of the world. He's controlling that. That's why the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, without getting into a long lesson, that there are different ranks in, 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 in the spirit world with, with Satan. Certain spirits are over the finances. See, while you focusing on that, if I can just get my credit, <laughs> and he's going to laugh at you. Say, yeah, that's right. Get it to 700. You'll get the house. Then you reach seven. He said, aha, I changed it to eight. He's the God of the system. All right, don't believe me. Keep, keep going with your smart self. See, that with some of us, how, how much has your smartness got you? What did I say? First John? First John 5 and 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amplified Bible says, whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. This is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Hmm. 
My God. You see, if you've been born again, you automatically have victorious status in you. Because whatever is born of God, that's us. You have victorious status living on the inside of you. In the Message Bible, it says, every God-begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. Wow. Tell somebody, I got victory living on the inside of me. So you have victorious status in you. You're born again. You're not, you, you are, you're not designed to lose. That's why when things don't go right, you, like, you feel... Because that's not in you. Now see, now your head might be trying to justify things, but within, when you're born again, what's in you? Be like, oh, this, ain't, this ain't right. This, 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 is not, this is not supposed to be the outcome of this. This is not. Now, your head will try to justify it, but when you say within your spirit, you're like, mm -mm, no. See, because you have victorious status on the inside of you. See, don't think it's ego. What's in us? How do I put it? What's in you is everything you do is supposed to work. Now, I can't explain it other than another saint can relate. See, it's beyond your head. It's beyond the intellect. But it's within you that in and everything you do is supposed to work. I am not supposed to fail in anything. Now, your mind and intellect will say different. But in your spirit. Am I too rich for somebody right? In your spirit, you know like anything I'm supposed to do is supposed to work. This is not supposed to fail. This is supposed to work. Why? Because you got that victorious status on the inside. I'm telling you. See, your head be saying something else. Them bills come in, got the money, you look at that, like you just. See, your head to try to say, well, that because you ain't got enough money. But inside, you're like, this ain't supposed to be like this. Yeah. Some is out or some is wrong. This is not supposed to be like. But see, the thing, some of us, we ignore that. And then we just deal in our head, well, I'm going through because of, oh, but then inside is like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. God causes you to triumph all the time. Yeah, I'm not, this is not supposed, this. Let me move off there, I'm telling you. See, sometimes we, 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 got, we got to tell our brain to shut up. I'm all for intelligence, y'all know I am. But sometimes you got to shut that stuff, shut it down. Brain, shut up, shut up, shut, just shut up. I'm not listening to my brain. I'm listening to my spirit. Because brain will tell you what you never can do, what you can't do, or you will only be able to do this if. And you just got to say, shut up. I ain't Googling up, nothing else. I'm not looking in the dictionary, nothing else. Lord, I need to hear you. I don't need Google. I don't need information. I need revelation. See, don't misunderstand I'm not, I'm not against sometimes, especially you business people doing different things, and you hear other vices, some other folks, but you got to be careful with that. Yeah. See, because I'm not trying to do something on that system. Yeah. That's a failing system. Yeah. Amen. We're children of God. We want to do it this. This doesn't fail. Yeah. When that comes down, this never comes down. Yeah. Oh, 
thank you, Jesus. See, that's the difference. See, we want to get to a point where, praise God for stuff out there, but we ain't dependent on that. See, you, you want to have that assurance in you that if you walk to get to your job tomorrow morning, they say, you know what? This department closed. We're sorry. You won't leave crying. <laughs> oh, Lord, what am I going to do? You won't leave. You just, oh, really? Kind of like, well, y'all should have t- told the brother before I left home. <laughs> Come on now. That's the, hey, 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 my God, my God. That's the place we want to be at. If that happened, like, I ain't going home crying. Hey, I'm not dependent on that anyway. If that brook dries up, God's got a million and one other resources. See, you got to get to a point I refuse to be controlled by the world. I ain't going to let the devil control me because he is the God over this system. I am not going to let this system control me. Tell me what I can have, what I can't have, when I can have it. I feel the Holy Ghost. Mm. See, I work to a point till I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. 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 Don't you let the system control you. How dare you tell me what I can have and what I can't have. And if I don't do it your way, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I'm an heir to God and join heirs with Christ. you dare tell me I can't have that kind of house because I only make $35,000 a year. Don't you tell me that. Don't you tell me I can't have a business because I'm a single parent. Don't you, I will not allow you to tell me that. I just, I just. Yeah, yeah. Let me read this and I'm done. There is nothing that can defeat your faith. But faith can defeat everything. The power of faith will bring down everything. Sickness must bow down to faith. Poverty and lack, all your bills must bow down to your faith. Any and everything that's not honest, just, pure, lovely, or of a good report, it must bow down to your faith. Come on and give them praise. We'll see you all Wednesday. Come on, give them praise. Glory to God.